Welcome. We are here to play Project Galileo, a rooted in trophy incursion. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do a round of player introductions. As I've said, I have played with each of these uh, wonderful people at uh, different tables, but I don't know if they've played with each other. So we're just going to do a round of name, pronouns, um, any experience with trophy. Um, and it's OK if you don't. Um, and then like, you know, what you'd be excited about for this particular game or this particular incursion. OK. Um, so I'll start. I'm Madeline Colley, Mads for short, she, they pronouns. I have <laughs> a lot of experience playing and running trophy games. Um, and I really prefer dark versus gold. But then again, I haven't played gold as much as I have dark. So yeah, this will be great. And this is an incursion that I've seen and I've read through, but I have not actually played or run myself before so i'm excited for that to see what kind of stories you guys create at this table so let me popcorn it over to mark hey i'm mark major i go by he and them and i have played and run a lot of trophy <laughs> but both flavors uh more than both flavors so yeah uh, i'm uh, always excited to see a sci-fi twist on uh the usual so i'm uh, looking forward to being a good time Go ahead and popcorn it over to somebody else. Let's go to Jim. Hey, I'm Jim. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. And uh, I haven't played Trophy proper. Uh, as such, I've played um, a little bit of Sunken. But that's it thus far. So I'm very excited to try this out. And uh, I guess we'll head over to Billy. I suppose so. Um, I'm Billy. Uh, he, him. I've played quite a bit of trophy now, uh, a good, a good amount of gold, and I've run some dark personally. I don't think I've, I might have played in dark. I don't know anymore. It's just trophy, one or the other. But yeah, I'm super excited for sci-fi stuff. It's on my favorite flavor in role-playing games. So, pumped. Excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and then review some cats so we all know what expectations there are on the table. Um, if there's any questions whatsoever, then we can also address them when we go for safety tools. So CATS stands for Concept, Aim, Tone, and Subject Matter. Again, setting up expectations for our table so this way we know what we're in for. Um, and then, uh, again, we'll just try to um, agree on, like, you know, what... Uh, will work for this particular um, incursion. And then if there's anything that crosses any lines or veils or like, you know, like kind of edges consent and safety, then like, of course, we'll address that too. Okay. So concept. Trophy Dark itself is a role-playing game about a group of doomed seekers entering the haunted spaces of the world. This particular incursion, Project Galileo, tells the story of scientific researchers on Mars who find a constructed cavern through automated mining. The group decide to explore for first evidence of another intelligent species, eager to share the glory of their find, but perhaps discovering more than they bargained for. <laughs> Aim. The characters may hope to get home and become incredibly famous and successful because of their finds, but GM and the players know better. <laughs> they are all going to die horrible deaths, probably. Uh, but this is a good thing. It lets you off the hook of having to play smart and lets you focus on making things interesting. The Seekers are doomed and not likely to survive. If they do, they may not be recognizable as the same person. Take risks, play into the drama, play to lose. Tone. The tone of Trophy Dark is desperate and often tragic. You will likely encounter conflict or tension between the explorers, where characters are encouraged to backstab or betray their companions in pursuit of their goal. And subject matter. The game will be R-rated. Uh, <laughs> we know this is a horror game, <laughs> okay? Um your explorers are risk takers willing to make dangerous choices. The game will likely be violent, terrifying, and include scenes of bodily horror and loss of self-control. Um, gameplay itself. The gameplay is highly collaborative and improvisational. Players have a lot of say over the world itself and can introduce story elements that no one, not even the GM, was expecting. And play moves between the fiction and the metagame frequently. The game runs best 
when everyone feels comfortable offering up their ideas. It uses six-sided dice of two colors, light and dark, to determine the outcome of risky actions. And we'll be using a specific uh, dice roller room that is made for trophy <laughs> for the light and dark um, calls, okay? So viewing into safety, safety tools that are available at this table are X card. So if there's anything that's objectionable in an unfun way, you want to make an X in the video with your arms, call out X, you know, in the chat or just say X out loud and we will stop play, find out what needs to be X carded, take it out and then move on. We will not ask why that particular thing was X carded. Okay. We also have open door. So for whatever reason, if you need to kind of step out of the scene, just take the open door. Um, if you need to leave the game because it's you discover it's not for you, that's perfectly okay. Just say, I'm opening, I'm opening the door. <laughs> and then just let us know if you're going to be leaving for the scene, the moment, or the whole game. And then we will, again, not ask you why. Okay. And then finally, lines and veils. We do have a safety tab in the character keeper that we are using for our character information. Safety tab has lines, things that won't be crossed, things that will not be part of the game at all. Veils are things that may come up, be present, be mentioned, but won't be described in any detail. We won't role play it out, just fade to black. Okay. So in case um, anybody hasn't had a chance to really look at the the list of <clears throat> lines and veils, like we're just going to take a little, little look, see at it now. Pardon. So, so far we have homophobia, transphobia, intimate partner violence, racism, sexism, and sexual assault and sexual violence under lines. So those will not be in our game. And then under veils, we have sexual content, slurs, starvation, body shaming, human waste. Okay. There are columns for ask first. So again, check in with each other. You know, if you're not sure, just go ahead and say, is this okay if I say whatever? Um, ask first on bullying, dental horror, eye injuries, kink, BDSM, mind control, suicide, and torture. And then there's an interest column, which is barely checked body horror. <laughs> so we have an interest in body horror. Absolutely. In trophy, absolutely. It's definitely something that can come up for sure. Okay. Um, so if there's any additions that you need to make, again, like, you know, just let me know or like, you know, just flag us um, in the chat just to let us know that you want to, um, you know, say that there's a change or an addition. Um, just don't downgrade anybody's um, lines to avail or, or ask first because lines are lines. We're just not going to include them in play. Okay. And if it accidentally happens, please just again, stop play and then just kind of call it out and say, it's like, yeah, that was kind of a line. It's like, okay. Yeah. All right. You know, feel, feel free to call me out. Cause like, sometimes I'll just go like picturing the things in my head and then sometimes they're pretty horrifying. So absolutely. All right. So having gone over um, cats as well as safety, we're going to go ahead and pause the recording at this moment, and we're going to make characters, okay? So the uh, players will have plenty of options. Well, I mean, like in this particular uh, incursion specifically, they're going to have um, a few options to choose from, and then we will introduce the characters when we come back, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. And we're back. Players have created some characters. We're going to be introduced to them one by one and then see how they started their day. So let me go from uh, left to right on my screen. Jim, can you please introduce us to Rowan, please? I, I will attempt to, as he is still even now forming in my cranium. So uh, uh, details may drift as, uh, as things uh, catapult forward. Um, so uh, Rowan Knight... Uh, is, uh, he uses he, him pronouns. Um, he is a geologist. Uh, he is a former athlete. And uh, his, uh, his drive uh, is to uh, buy out his contract with Anantech. I have no idea what Anantech is, but I'm excited to find out. Um, he, uh, he does have the ritual of uh, 
uh, it's called bypass it by which he can uh, change the function of a device if he needs to because I figure is he's kind of been uh, put into many positions in which it's like he's the only one on staff or he's the only one there at a given time and he's just like okay I'll fix the the, the freaking thing myself and he goes in and he you know fixes the fixes the bloody thing himself um, and uh, the uh, the question and then uh, how did you spend this morning is that uh, is that where we are. Uh, let's do the begin? let's do the laundry list first, and then we'll we'll do the, the scenes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All so, right. uh, Mark, go ahead and introduce us to Newton, please. Yeah, uh, I've got Newton Haynes. He him. Newton is an engineer. Uh, he was a child prodigy, and uh, he is looking to prove his antagonistic dissertation advisor wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, his ritual uh, he has his improbable intuition uh, probably as part of his child prodigy background there nice all right and last but not least billy introduce us to lucas please uh yeah lucas uh he him i decided to choose archaeologist as the occupation uh with inner city schooling as his background uh, his drive is to receive a Nobel Prize, and uh, he might be good with uh, excavation and history, but his ritual is percussive maintenance, which is to fix a device by hitting it. It would be mild as anything, but he might have a temper too. Who knows? We'll find out for sure. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, see about how your day has been. So let me read the first part of the blurb of this incursion to give us to set the scene. So 2033, you've been pursuing your scientific exploration on Mars. 11 Earth months into the 12, you'll be spending in Galileo base, after which you will board your drop shuttle and return to Earth. Much of the operation of the structures is automated, allowing you to spend most of your time on your own research. One by one, can you each tell me like what it looks like for your day beginning working on your own research? Same order as before, unless you want to pass at the moment, <laughs> Jim. Uh, day generally begins with collecting rock samples and generally proceeds with the analysis of the rock samples. <laughs> and I feel as though that's a big, that's like the, the, the bulk of it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's like, it's, it's that. And he, uh, he goes and does our, uh, our base have a, if our base has like a, a small gym or something along those lines. He probably spends time in there. Um, and uh, that's, that's probably most of it. <laughs> as far as I can tell um, at the moment. Cool. All righty. And Newton. Yeah. Uh, Newton starts as, I think a lot of the uh, we said like a lot of the processes of the base and whatnot are automated, but he still does his uh, routine uh, walkabout checks uh, anyway, just to make sure everything is in in order. And I think he also has uh, set up or installed his own set of um, measuring devices or um, analytics there, and he is collecting additional data on you know, how the habitat and whatnot are functioning in the Martian uh, atmosphere. And Lucas, how's your how's your day going? Um, I think that he does like a lot of cross-referencing with older data that we got before we landed here. <clears throat> so it's usually working with uh, Rowan, I suppose, to kind of look at the rocks, date them, stuff like that. And just kind of get a sense of time on Mars and how it's progressed over the thousands and millions of years. 
So it's a lot of nose in book kind of stuff. Well, today is your lucky day, gentlemen. Today, a mining drone on a routine sampling program broke through into a cavern. Originally, you all thought it was natural, but it quickly became apparent that this was the result of construction. I haven't quite seen it yet, but in your particular occupations, what a detail. What do you, what helps you assume that this is constructed rather than, oh, the mining drone just broke into an open space? Through the lens of your occupation, what detail do you notice that indicates this is a constructed cavern? I, I, I've been applying various types of uh, breaking devices to rocks for a, a good portion of my life, and I know what that looks like. <laughs> uh, I think we're getting readings of uh, symmetrical structures in there that are um, that don't match the surrounding rock composition wise yeah i th i think uh playing off that actually um <clears throat> we get kind of a rough readout of like when it breaks through it's kind of sonar maps the room in a way and i think that <clears throat> lucas kind of recognizes that it's not it's not random. It's it's like when you're digging and you find ancient civilization, you know, buildings, there's some kind of layout to it. Very cool. Finding the first evidence of another intelligent species it is the scientific achievement for the ages. I believe you've decided to explore it as a group and share in the glory that will be coming your way. So as you're getting ready, as you are making your preparations to descend into this constructed cavern, I'd like to hear what you are thinking about and how you will, in your own profession, your own occupation, you see this as your breakout moment. And you don't um, have to do it in the order that I called out before, just so you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's pretty easy. This <clears throat> finding uh, signs of intelligent life at any point would be, it would get me on the faces of magazines. It would get me the Nobel Prize that I so desire and it would just uh it, it would be the archaeological discovery of humanity's lifetime yeah and through an engineering lens uh, there's a lot of uh, techniques and structures and whatnot that we can uh, either learn from or learn from their mistakes uh, you know, bringing a, a our uh, archaeological uh, architectural analyses to uh, non-human structures. Uh, through the lens of my drive, uh, I, I think Rowan is thinking, this is way too convenient. This is why those bastards sent us here. <laughs> He thinks back to who it was that funded the mission. <laughs> hey. Just out of curiosity, Rowan, how far did you get in your athletic career 
that you ended up settling for geology? So, um, I think that, uh, so I, uh, I, I think he played, uh, I, I, I think so. Okay. Just because these are the things that pop into my head first when I'm just suddenly creating a character, sure. um, is, uh, I think he was playing, uh, f uh, football as it is known globally, soccer as it's known in America. Um, and I think he made it as far as like a, a at least into a, into a premier league. Um, and, uh, then I believe there was probably, there was probably an injury that took place. That is usually how these careers end, uh, end early. Um, <laughs> to the, and it was not a, uh, it, it, it was not, uh, it was not a crippling injury, but it was one that was, uh, enough to basically keep him from being able to continue playing football. Um, and he had already, you know, he'd already, you know, it, he, he'd had studied geology and done really well with it, uh, prior to, you know, getting, getting his, his breakthrough when back when he was in college. Um, and so he was just like, all right, um, let's, uh, let's go back and double down on this. Initially it was while I'm waiting to heal. Let's go back and study geology like my uh, like my ma keeps telling me to do, um, and uh, and he did, and so that turned into you know that waiting to heal turned into um, basically a a a degree in geology, uh, <laughs> and uh, he uh, just essentially. And then he, you know, went went to went to get the equivalent of his basically the equivalent of a master's, and uh, you know, basically was at a point he was like, okay, well, I guess we're just going to go all the way with this because then you know, fine, I, I'm never actually going to fully heal from this. Um, so, and it's like he can still run, but it's not like he can, you know, uh, <laughs> he 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 cannot unfortunately uh, run in the way that a football match would require him to. Right. Um, so I'm thinking that I'm thinking that maybe is. like Anantech <clears throat> has also perhaps been uh, part of your scholarship package. Yeah, I think that was part of it. And uh, it turned out that his uh, that like there was also unbeknownst to him, there might have been a, a, a mortgage involved uh, on, 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 on the part of his parents. Uh, and so it was just one of those things where it was like, oh, great, they're that burrowed into our, why did you sign that contract? <laughs> great, wonderful, okay, no, that's fine. And, you know, he's assumed it since this is, it's been like 20 years uh, <laughs> already. So he's, uh, you know, he, he, since, uh, since all of that. So he, and he's still paying it off. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I mean, how long has it been for you? Um... Newton with your dissertation advisor. Uh, what was the question again? How long has it been for you mm. with your dis dissertation advisor? Did you ever get that oh, doctorate yeah. or? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but still the, the, the sting of like not, uh, not convincing someone that I was right is worse than not getting a degree. Uh, it's been it's been uh, several years, I think. So he kept on saying that you were wrong. Mm -hmm. What does he look like? Um, uh, older. Uh, kind of like your uh, your thin, gray-haired, uh, weedy New England professor professor type. Uh, very very conservative, intellectually. What was the one thing that he always did that annoyed the? hell out of you <laughs> uh, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree he would say that yeah 
No, we're not going to. Mm. And Lucas. Yes. You were you you survived your inner city schooling. You got through and you used your brain instead of brawn. You made sure that you were going to get out and make something of yourself. Why inspired to something as lofty as the Nobel Prize? Who told you? What did you see that inspired you to, to look at that and say, that's what I want. That's what I'm going to get. Um, I think an old professor he had um, at some downtrodden community college kind of that was the prof always the professor's goal and him and the professor be became very close because he started spending a lot of time even outside school hours with his professor <clears throat> so it kind of became a uh vicariously through lucas could this professor attain his own goal so lucas kind of adopted it from his father figure What was his name? Um, Professor Jones. What scent reminds you of him? Um, I don't know if it, it's it's not a particular scent, but it's like um. So Professor Jones always worked hands-on in dig sites and stuff like that he wasn't just relegated to his office or the classroom <clears throat> so it is it's that like dirt smell almost nice all right so you will be finishing off your preparations and you will be getting ready to descend into this space, this cavern that represents hope and glory for your future. And we're going to take a 10 minute break um, before we get fully into the incursion and start ring one. All right. So on my watch, we should be back like five past, okay? So, see you in 10. Ring one. You all have put on EVA suits and descended in the path of the mining drone. You will stop just inside the cavern, sending the mining drone further ahead sends back images of a worked stone hallway, very tall and just a bit narrow. Metallic panels are on this wall, all about six feet above the floor, but at irregular intervals. Abruptly, there's a flash of blue light, the drone's camera sending an image of an electrical arc before the signal cuts out. When you move down the tunnel, you see, I imagine your suits have helmets and you have some kind of either flashlight on the helmet or maybe like, you know, attached to your wrist and you sweep the space. There's still occasional flashes of electricity between the wall and the partially melted drone that you see ahead of you, but the burn marks on the wall panel suggest this is not intentional. Still, after an unknown number of years, something remains functional. What do you want to do? Uh, 
Well, I mean, uh, no time like the present, right? I'm I'm heading in there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully followed by my companions. Yeah, I think Newton is very interested in uh, checking out those metallic panels and uh, maybe trying to pry one up, unfasten it somehow, see what's behind it. Yeah, and these flash of, uh, flashes of electricity are still happening here, though. Mm, mm. How are I, you protecting yourselves? Yeah. So are the are the are the flashes coming off, like the walls in this this thing we've uncovered, or are they coming off something else? They seem to be arcing, like just the metallic panels are like six feet above, mm. but like, you know, there's no sensor sensor reason to, to how they're patterned, but the arcs just kind of seem to come at random. You can't quite tell where they're coming from down this hallway. You just it's saw just the electrical flash, the arc, before the drone cut out, and you can see its melted bit ahead of you. It's just going from panel to panel? Yeah. Um, how far in are these panels? Um, Like from your flashlights? I mean, like I'm probably saying... From like, the edge, yeah. Yeah, from the edge. I, I, yeah, yeah, basically, like, you know... Um, at a regular intervals, like, you know, about starting five feet to, you know, down the hallway about like 20 feet or so. Okay. And but so they're like individual panels. They're not like part of a bigger mosaic of panels. It's just like one panel, rock, panel, rock, that kind of thing. Yeah. But no real, again, no real uh, pattern to be seen, at least not yet. And was the drone flying up between those panels when it got zapped or down below? Um, well, you tell me. Like, how how do the mining drones work? I mean, like, are they crawlers? Are they mm. hovers? Are they um, just bore through? <laughs> mm. You know, like like on 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 uh, what is it? Treads? Yeah, yeah. If it was a yeah. mining drone, yeah. I would imagine it was a tread. Drone okay. Drone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm saying like treads, drills, and lasers, maybe mm -hmm. if we if we are yeah. lucky. Again, it's not completely like melted, and you'd have to tell me how big it is. But I mean, like it, you can definitely see there's part of it melted because of the the arc, mm -hmm. the electrical arc. So want to be careful. I suppose that whoever made this place questions himself could have trapped the the front so what we could be seeing is some kind of trap right or a security yeah yes well, i guess that's Probably. sorry i'm speaking in a old world language <laughs> <laughs> hey well what's this uh let me see if i kind of can i get a, a look at one of these panels without getting like in front of it <laughs> Basically, and actually, so, I think uh, I think Newton was going up to look at one of the panels, wasn't he? Yeah, but they're, they're like six feet off the ground. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll probably get too close to one to see like, if if it's like embedded, if it's bolted to the wall, if it's just like immersed into it. Like, what's the how is it constructed? So if you are going to be taking a closer look, this would definitely institute a risk roll. All right. One of the first rolls of the game. So this is how it works. Um, if you have the, uh, the infographic available, you can go ahead and follow along. But essentially, we're doing a risk roll. So before trying something risky, you are going to see with between what I say and the other players, 
what could possibly go wrong if you roll badly? <laughs> so let's have some suggestions out here. This is how we establish it first. What could go wrong if he fails or loses his nerf? So the obvious one would be, of course, that you get a little bit too close and then those random arcs like, you know, strike your suit. Mm. Yeah, I I would just second that. I think that that's the at least the most dangerous thing uh, at present. Yeah, that's basically all I can think of aside from, you know, gets hit, takes a nap. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now. Gathering the dice. And this is how we build the dice roll. Okay. So in the dice in the uh, the dice roller room, under risk, mm. it asks you how many light and how many dark to do. Okay. So to you take a light die if you have a skill or equipment that makes this contest easier. I mean, excuse me, this <laughs> task easier, mm -hmm. either because of your occupation or your background. So um I would I mean, say construction this perfect. Like how it's put together. Great. Okay. So that's one light die. And then you take a dark die because you're definitely risking your body in this case. Yeah. So one light, one dark. Now to get a second light die to increase your odds, you will have to accept a devil's bargain from one of us. So um, myself and the other players would suggest a devil's bargain. The way the devil's bargain works is no matter what. That's always how we start. No matter what something happens so regardless of how he rolls this will happen <laughs> i think dbs hmm i think that no matter what mm -hmm. um <clears throat> an arc is going to catch some part of like if you have an arm readout on your suit it'll zap your arm readout so you'll be left with basically no HUD walking mm -hmm. through here in case you get separated or anything Yeah, I like that. I mean, um, no matter what, when you when you say HUD, it's like the the um, heads up display. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, yeah, like, like on your own suit, or like you're talking like navigation. Um, I I I would say. Like his whole kind of readout on his ah. mask that he can see, his layout's gone. So, you know, he can't read his own O2 meter. He okay. can't read stuff like that. Gotcha. I I'm going to say that if, like, you know, I'm just going to uh, like do it differently. So, no matter what, an arc will hit your suit. Your suit takes the brunt of the blast, but then your communication's out. So, if you do get separated, you can't contact anybody. Rowan, any any uh, devil's bargain you'd like to offer? No matter what. The only thing I can think of is terrible, and I don't know if it's it's too early to introduce something that's terrible. Introduce something terrible, because again, it's going to be Newton's choice whether he takes that particular uh, DB or not. <laughs> see, the least terrible way I can put it is um something knows love it uh i think i'll take that last one i love it oh the fodder <laughs> you, you, if you approach something okay. knows <laughs> okay great all right so risk risk roll two light one dark please all right 
That is a six light. Nice. Okay. So you succeed in what you're trying to do and uh, you get to take a look at, look, see at a panel. Um, let's see. Dark die higher than your current ruin? No. So you do not take any ruin. And six means that you absolutely succeed. Describe how, how you succeed in, in getting to um, the panel and what you are doing with it. Um, so how big are the panels? Um, like, you know, uh, like kind of like a, an electrical box, but set into the wall. So hmm. not that big, like maybe like a, a couple of feet. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty easy then to kind of, uh, they, it's unclear how they, uh, are attached, but they come off very easily, uh, with like just little, like pressure they almost like pop off like a um like the, the soft open drawers kind of like push it open and it just slides out so you don't get arced but you end up seeing when you take the the panel off of uh, the the wall i'm gonna say that underneath there seems to be something that glows it looks deliberate like some kind of rudimentary circuitry of some sort. And it leads to um, some kind of um, the closest thing you can see that, 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 that occurs to your mind is an LED light that looks like it's pulsing from where it was and then starts to go and follow this weird circuitry that leads out and up away from that panel. Something. Is that like on on the wall or behind the wall? Yeah, like well, behind that panel that you popped open. Got it. Got it. Yeah, and you see you see the LED light scurry away, basically. Hmm. Something's gonna know you're here. Okay. And um... is there anything I can make of the? circuitry like what what it might be for or yeah i think it's it's it is as um it is as uh lucas had said it could be like a like a, a type of trap like where the the electricity is is wired in such a way that it creates these randomized arcs that could cause issue with somebody or something that that kind of uh, comes through think of like a very large bug zapper mm -hmm. wow well very good job uh, not dying to that <clears throat> since we don't know what the hell's going on here but i fully intend to find out and uh are the other electrical zaps still kind of going on or um, further down the hallway, I think in the darkness, like beyond your flashlights, you see the, you know, like kind of like kind of jumping back and forth. What would you like to do? Hmm. Newton, you don't see any way to like shut the whole thing down from the front, do you? Um, do I? Should I just start yanking out wires? Oh <laughs> yeah. well, okay, now let's wait just a second. I don't want to destroy this uh, scientific discovery. Yeah, right. But I also don't want any of us to get uh, killed. So whatever we can do to get deeper in. Or maybe like the way I approached the panels, like if we can duplicate that, maybe that would be safe. Uh, hang on, can I take a look real quick? Yeah, go for it. Yep. I'm very foolishly going to look and see if I can um, do something to. Uh, I I have the I have this ritual whereby I can change the function of a device. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Alrighty. So, 
All right. So I'm just going to say that whenever you use a ritual, you automatically get the dark die, you know, because mm -hmm. using any ritual is a, is a risk of some sort. Okay. Uh -huh. Excellent. Yes. So we're gathering our dice. But before we do, before we completely gather our dice, let's say what could go wrong. All right. So everybody else, like, you know, go ahead and say what could go wrong in this case. It, it could change you instead. Yeah, I think that um <clears throat> let's see, worst possible scenario, uh you tampering and trying to kind of reverse, you know, whatever polarity or anything in, inside this trap <clears throat> will uh force some kind of lockdown on the front mm -hmm. door. Mm. Mm. We can't get out. Yeah. Um Yeah, I was going to say that <clears throat> trying to change its function would, and you wouldn't necessarily know it until later, but I mean, like it would end up closing something else further along. Ooh. Yeah, so these are possibilities for what could go wrong. Um, and you don't like have to it. choose, you know, yeah, you don't have to choose this one. It's devil's bargains that we get to do. But just so you know, I mean, like devil's bargains can be, or I should say, like anything oh, yeah. that goes wrong can be turned into a devil's bargain for no matter what. <laughs> so anyway, let's go to uh, building the rest of the role. Okay. Now that we have that. Take a light die if you have a skill or equipment that makes the contest, excuse me, why keep doing that? That, that that makes this easier. So let's see, tectonics, mineralogy, hydroponics, athletics. Well, you have the ritual. So, so I mean, you know, you could conceivably. Um, yeah, uh, I was going to ask you if I can use the ritual for that or not. Um, if not, I can try to figure out a way to, I can try to figure out a way to work mineralogy into this if I cannot use the ritual. <laughs> I mean, if you're changing the function of the device, like I'll totally take a parlay on the on the mineralogy. So basically, this is uh, th this is the thing where the lightning is attracted to the plates, right? That's kind of what we're looking. It kind at. of yeah. gets that kind of gets that idea, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the the charge is being forced one way. I'm trying to force the charge in a different direction, right? Uh -huh. So uh, it's just basically the idea is that it's it's trying to hook onto. It's trying to hook onto these plates. What I'd rather do is is have it more grounded in, into where it's grounded, the wall. Nice. Basically. So okay. that it's going to be attracted more to these stones where it's going to, obviously, it's going to stop because it's grounded. So it's, well, assuming the laws of physics operate the same way here, I don't know if they do. Uh, but um, We hand wave a lot of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so no worries. Okay. Fantastic. Changing the mineral to which it is attracted, basically, okay. is what I'm looking at doing here. I'll take it. Yeah. Okay. So that's one light die. All right. You have dark die because of the ritual, one light die because of the of the skill. Um, now, this is where we offer the devil's bargains. So we can change some of the, the what could go wrong things into a DB, no matter what. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's see what people offer up and then what you decide. You don't have to take devil's bargains. That's another thing I wanted to mention. It's just... The extra light die kind of gives a better odds chance. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's see. What can we do for Devil's Bargains? Um, I think no matter what, you find evidence that Anantech has been in here and messed with this equipment at Ooh, some point. Nice. I cannot do better than that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I really think I want that one, but okay. Sorry if Wait, any uh, well, other... I thought it was gonna, I was gonna, but I mean, like that's too damn good. I, I, I really like that one. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, yeah. You're like, sorry, it's either no, no devil's bargain or that devil's bargain. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Def definitely want that 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 particular devil's bargain. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, so two light die, one dark, please, under the risk roll. Okay. Risk, two light, one dark. And I shall press this button. Roll to six. You succeed. Nice. All right, great. Um, 
and you don't gain any ruin because it's like it's the six light so that's great um describe to us how this succeeds like you know how you mess with the with the um uh the circuitry and changing how it functions use what what does the ritual look like let's put it that way okay so i have uh, i have some tools uh that i have i assume that the, in this in this future of ours um eva suits have become somewhat more streamlined than uh than they are at present in the the quote unquote real world um so we actually have you know the 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 gloves that we are wearing um the whatever sort of um um uh mesh they're created from actually but well i say mesh but it's you know they're still you know protect protect it still protects from the atmosphere um and uh so it's really just a question of um so so that you can get in and do a degree of fine work um with them and uh so i i think i think it's just a question of like going in with uh with you know i've got a couple of tools that i kind of will uh will go in and uh and basically, I, I figure yes. I, I kind of have uh, a sense that some of my tools are very old, but that I have then that were originally for geological studies, and some of them I've, I've kind of rigged to be able to do basic other things just because you know of the need to for equipment. Um, and so it's just a question of sort of going in and like seeing where the th different things lead lead um, very carefully using using grippers sometimes to try to sort of unplug certain things and plug into others because I don't necessarily want to touch them directly. Uh, don't want to touch the live wires directly. Um, but then, so there's this moment when I pull out and I'm just sort of like standing there, ah, all right, no, that's, that's the one, that's the one. That's, the, oh no, it couldn't be that. And I pull out, I, I, I pull something, there's this moment where this electricity is arcing back and forth all along the corridor in front of us. And I'm like, no, hang on, I got it, I got it. And uh, I plug it into another port, and then it immediately darkens, it grounds, and it's, that electricity is shunted into the wall. And it's now very passively, and we still see these little crackles of electricity go back and forth, but they're immediately absorbed. Yes. by the rock next to them and as i sort of am staring at it i'm like you bastards because i realize i've seen this configuration before and i know this work and i'm like you tell your companions see do I, do I allow this to, uh, how closely are they watching me right now? I think that's the question. Is, is anyone right next to me while I'm doing this? Newton is very curious about what's going on. Okay. Newton will notice that I have, I have, I have, I will, will have heard everything that I just said, including the you bastards thing. And I'm like, and he'll sort of, I'll sort of glance over, sees, sees you looking and it's like, I know this work. How? It's, I mean, like the text different, but in, at a certain level, a fuse box is a fuse box, right? They said, it's in the, since one of the first things on the, in the three ring binder that they give you at Anantec. This is how they power their servers. Same configuration. It's a different device. It does a different thing. But uh, no, I'm not the first one who's been in here with these kinds of tools. That's what I'm saying. That's, I mean, the this was sealed off before, though. You would think, wouldn't you? No. Maybe this isn't unique. No. 
if it's not. Well, either they've been here, or someone's been to them. Either think, way, I don't think it's good. Do Do you think you hear this, Lucas? Um, no, I, I think I'm far enough away that I don't. It's probably um, over comms, right? If it is over comms, then yeah, I'm I'm fine hearing it. But oh, or do we do the like touching the helmet thing? <laughs> it's, true. Yeah. it's true. We can't. Yeah, it's because we're in a we don't have atmosphere, so we'd have to be doing this over comms. I yeah. think in order for this to. To actually, <laughs> yeah, actually work unless we've got like a, unless Comtech has has it evolved to the point that it's like, it's like you an immediate sort of just private channel, mm -hmm. or actually, mm -hmm. it don't need to, it doesn't need to evolve. We have that now, uh, <laughs> sort of private. Uh, but uh, I think probably I hit the, I think prob, I think it's one of those things where like it was just. I, I'm sorry, what was he thinking about it? Um, I'm going to ask. Um, uh, Billy, Billy, do you want to have heard it? Uh, no, you guys can okay. have that conversation. So this was a one-to-one -one, This was a one -to -one communication then. Cool. And I just, I hit the one-to-one -one button, basically. <laughs> sort of, uh, before, this, uh, before this happened. And, you know, not, not telling you not to tell him, but it's uh, yeah. just, you know. This is just like a very intense moment of you like. You wouldn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Archaeologists. Tech, tech people talking. Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. gosh. This has happened to me in real life. Um, <laughs> oh no. Oh God. Um, yeah, I think he kind of claps his gloves together after the arc start opening the hallway. And he's like, okay, well, I suppose. Um, Great job, everybody. Thumbs up. Uh, we could probably try to head in deeper. Uh, I don't know if we should get the try to see if we can get the drone working again and send it first. What do you mm -hmm. What do you guys think? That might be a good idea. I can take a look at it for sure. Yeah. If you want to try and fix it, I'm going to ask you to to do a. Um to do a role just because it's like it'll determine like if the drone is with you for the rest of the the right. journey okay yeah yeah I'll give it a shot all right so definitely um a risk again um yes a risk so uh, i do have mechanical repair there we go yep okay so you've already covered that particular thing let's find out what could go wrong if he fails so Fixing the drone. What could go wrong? Um, worst case scenario is this drone starts going haywire and turns its lasers and stuff on <laughs> things that are not rock. I, 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 I have the possibility of the, uh, if the, the drone is fixed and now has a different agenda, which is very similar to what you just said, but possibly, um, we don't know it immediately. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. Well, I mean, like the the the, the more mild thing is would the drone just doesn't work. Like you, it is beyond um, pair. However, maybe something that you do to it. Signals that thing. Mm. Okay. All right. So one light die for the skill. Mechanical mm -hmm. pair. Um, dark die, if you're risking your mind or body, I'm going to say body because it's like, you know, if, if, if it goes nuts, then you're the first one to take, take the hit. All right. So dark die for that and a light die to accept a devil's bargain. Yeah. No matter what, what will happen?
I think no matter what, I think you're going to find that maybe, just maybe, your dissertation advisor was kind of right about something after all. Because what you're doing didn't work. Yeah, I, th I think I second that. I was trying to uh, shove a drive in the devil's bargain a little bit, so that works for me. And the only thing I, I came up with was that some important piece of the drone is going to get left behind, but that, you know, that, that sounds much better. <laughs> uh, I will not take that bargain. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Prideful. All right, great. Yes. Uh, so that's one dark, one light. One dark, one light, please. Hey, hey, hey that is a six dark. Oh, my God. That works perfectly, well, but it really yes. goes up. Yes, you uh, does go. It, it does work. Describe to us how you get the drone working again, but also tell us how you are getting more um, involved in the creepiness of the environment um i think it's pretty clear that some essential uh connections were just completely fried and uh i cannibalized some of the circuitry from behind the panel that we opened up and used that to uh, reconnect it and that seems to work just great uh, I think I'm like, oh, I'm starting to, yeah, I'm starting to understand a little bit about how this this stuff works. Might be, might be better than the stuff we do. I think you are seeing a glow from the drone, and it is not the usual. Uh, glow of the energy cells that you had to mess around with but if the glow from the led thing in the panel was like a soft blue mm -hmm. as opposed to the usual like orange yellow um, that you're used to seeing then this glow from fixing the drone is also a soft blue Okay. And the drone lurches to life, just kind of getting it back on its legs or its tread, and then starts to slowly move forward. You can hear a little bit of rattling, but at least it's working. Yeah. And I think beyond the drone, as it moves forward, the hallway gently curves. You come to a simple, unlocked mechanical door. The handle, a six-pronged knob, is at head height. Who opens the door? Um, Lucas is more than happy to open the door if the other two are wary after their experiences. I mean, the arcs are done. I mean, like, there's no more. Yeah, we did. We did great. Yeah, like you know, <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. maybe you, there's yeah, a little bit of did great. maybe there's a little bit of crackling around some of the some of the stones embedded into the wall, but there's no more random arcing. It's clear as you open up the door. What are your what are each of your initial research conclusions? And what do you hope to see beyond this entrance? It's a question for uh, each of you. Since, since I wasn't privy to the conversation that was just had, I am fully in the realm of <clears throat> this is some kind of other intelligent life work that was left behind. And so I would want nothing more to basically open this door into a snapshot into the past, see some base or something from another species preserved the way it was however long ago.
Yeah, I don't know that I would have any conclusions yet, but I think my first uh, inclination would be to, like, I'm pretty confident that we were the first ones, or first humans in here, um, and that uh, this A is not, like, 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 this is probably not the only one of these uh, that exists, and someone else has retrieved technology from one before and brought it back. Or that it has existed for a very, very, very long time and was uh, you know, brought to earth with, <laughs> with the folks who emigrated from here to there or something. What do you hope to see though? Beyond mm, the door. What do I hope to see? Um, I hope to see more uh, more things I can take apart and play with. Uh, more different kinds of uh, gadgets and systems that we can analyze. Rowan, any research conclusions? And what do you hope to see beyond this entrance? Or are you just so, very rattled with the Anantech? I, I think some of, there is some, well, yeah, there's so much he's hoping not to see behind the doors. <laughs> but uh, the, the, as far as research conclusions go, I mean, the geology brain is still in there. So it's just going to be like, okay. Um, there is some degree of excitement somewhere that has been shoved off uh, at the moment, but is still there that, okay, because the, the trick at the panel worked, that means that there are there is hope in the that in compatibility with 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 some some of the minerals that we perhaps even have yet to find here and so what he's he's hoping is for evidence <laughs> evidence of interesting rocks really uh <laughs> that's the uh that's the main thing <laughs> Okay. And I'm going to say that Did you enter in. There is dust on the perfectly flat floor. Looks like it's thick from thousands of years. But yet, some of it is broken up by footprints, filled in by hundreds of years of dust. Footprints, if you so think of them, are fan-shaped and made by creatures with more than two legs. And I'm going to say that Newton As your ruin rose, you, and you enter this room, I think you take a deep breath and you feel something squirming in your lungs. You cough and it stops moving for now. Take the condition Soft squirm. Soft squirm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. And that is the end of ring one. We're nearing the hour. Let's go ahead and take a five minute break before we hit ring two. Okay. Cool. Five minutes. And now we enter ring two. Coming out from behind this entrance, it opens up into further tunnel. And you reach a large ledge. 
Your flashlights continue to illuminate the space in front of you and the space that you're on, but do nothing to penetrate the inky blackness beyond you. I think in the distance you can see a series of what look like buildings. They're receding into this darkness, but they seem to be illuminated by green lights on their exterior, as if you are looking at some kind of faraway glow-in-the-dark uh, edifice. And in the same green glow that illuminates these buildings, it illuminates a bridge just ahead, leading directly to the entrance of a building. Now, mind you, this particular bridge looks like it has several holes in it near the apex of its arch upward before it goes down towards that entrance. But it's kind of dark. It's hard to see. There seems to be a second bridge spiraling lower into the darkness, but you can't tell where it's going. What do you do? And do you want to talk about it? Role play. Wow. Okay. So that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> a lot more going on here than I assumed. This is, I, I, I would go so far as to say this is a good thing. Yeah. This is unprecedented as far as we know. And uh, just so um, I think Rowan is just going to tap the the drone, uh, the drone's head for a, for a second, just to be like, "Oh, you getting all this?" <laughs> I think coming from the from the drone, you hear a very faint, a very faint voice. It sounds as if like maybe the speaker is muffled a little bit. Or your connection to it, like in your comms, is like it's not it's not audible enough. But you hear something that sounds like Hello activated passive artificial listening observer on. Right, close enough. Uh... That sounds that sounds good to me. I think. Just sort of looking down at the footprints as being like, all right, so. Um, Two bridges. Yeah. So, my friends, I mean, I'm, I usually work from the top down, you understand. So I would rather go over this bridge and we can always come back and go into the nothingness later if you're so inclined. I would be interested in seeing how far down it goes and work our way up from the foundations. As long yeah, as we it... get evidence of this, I'm fine starting at the top or bottom. Yeah. Well, as long as uh, the drone is uh, sending readings back to the base and we're recording, I think we should be good. There's plenty to explore. I don't think we're going to do it all in one day. Is the is the drone going to do? I think just from eyeballing the bridge, we can see, and then the portion of the bridge, the other bridge that that, that that's closer to us. Does it look like the drone would be able to navigate either of those bridges? If we were playing trophy gold, I'd totally ask for a hunt roll to get that information. <laughs> In my mind, it's like it's like kind of like a large dog sized okay. drone. All right. Do we establish whether it was on legs or if it was on treads? Treads. treads. We said it was treads. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Alrighty. Like, it just depends on if it's the whole how big the holes are and how big the drone is, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's pretty dim because like it only goes, you know, it's only as far as you can see by your your flashlight. The drone doesn't necessarily need a flashlight. It's kind of got infrareds or 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 like um uh, what is it? Heat sensors or whatever in the in, like on its on its recording. So uh, night I mean, vision, it, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so because I think that this would be like a cool shot if it was a movie, I sure would love to like pull out a glow stick and pop it and just yeah. kind of toss it over the edge mm. just to see how far the light tracks down. Incredibly, your glow stick looks impossibly bright here because it's so dark. And the, the buildings that you see ahead of you like that have that glow in the dark kind of green are very, very dim. Like as if it's being muted somehow. So when that glow stick falls, you let it drop, it goes down, down, illuminating a little bit more of that lower bridge. That looks safer because it's like doesn't have as many holes. Um, the top bridge looks riskier but traversable as well and then the glow stick drops down down below the lower bridge and it falls with no discernible stop well um um low lower it lower it is then say as this happens I think Lucas I think you are starting to get the beginnings of a subtle change in your eyesight reds lose some saturation like maybe in your readout you it's like kind of blurred out for some reason. But you begin to see shades of green even beyond your readout, even beyond the buildings. Shades of green you have never seen before. Maybe it's an after effect of looking at the glow stick and watching it so intently. You don't know. But yeah. So you're picking the lower bridge, is that everybody? After kind of getting more of a look at it, mm -hmm. I, I Lucas is fine going downwards. Okay. If this were human architecture, you might call it a servant's entrance. Because as you traverse the lower bridge, which seems pretty safe according to your flashlight. Um, you know, no discernible cracks or holes that you have to worry about. And the drone is moving on. Uh, you see ahead of you a metal door kind of sagging in its stone frame. It's going to require some force to open. Because it's also offset, so it makes it difficult. Hmm. Shall I have a go at it? Oh, you're muted, Mark. Yeah. Rock, rocks are your job. Uh, I'm going to uh, grab up one of my uh, one of my tools, which I, I do not know. I am just conjuring tools out of my imagination. I'm not sure what I have. That's but, perfectly fine. But um, I imagine... I, I imagine I don't have anything that's specifically for opening doors, but I probably have something for prying rocks open. So, okay. uh, for, you know, for, for opening clefts and rocks, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so I take out a stick of dynamite. No. Uh, so I take out the... Uh, <laughs> As for not, not everybody, ruin. <laughs> yeah. So I take out the uh, 
So I take out like some sort of this is probably like a some sort of advanced pry bar type tool that grips two sides and pulls them apart, that kind oh, of deal. Nice. Um and so um kind of thing kind of thing like a like like a futuristic version of the thing that they use when you call AAA and you locked your keys in your car. That kind of thing, right? Um but uh you know, so it's gonna it's going to try to use the uh it's going to try to try to use the uh, the like you know starting with like finding a place to put in air pressure and that kind of thing or whatever whatever atmosphere we have here atmospheric pressure um, and uh, so you grab that I'm going to find find a point where I can start you know moving it back and forth you know and you know we're, you know you know up, upping the pressure but then also it's not purely, it is a thing that requires elbow grease. <laughs> All right. So, so sort of moving it back and forth to try to get the, get it, get a uh, gap open in the door that I can then pull. I'm going to say that as you're doing this, I think it's going to require a risk roll because there's some things that can happen here as you're trying to get this door open. Yes, terrible so, things. <laughs> um, so let's go through what could go wrong first. I'm going to say that, you know, as you're trying to use this this uh, mechanical pry, pry bar, um, you're going to shift the rock around the door and you're going to cause some kind of um, disturbance like maybe you're going to jack up the entrance that'll be very hard to open the door if not impossible and then in which case you have to go back and then you know take the take the other door so that's one thing that can go wrong anything else anybody have any other ideas um i think that as you're prying <clears throat> With this thing already sagging in its frame, you can shift it in a way that pulls it fully away from its frame and unfortunately on top of you. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, an obvious one could go wrong is there's something terrible on the other side that we, we don't want uh, not to have a door between us and that. That's wonderful. I was just thinking the pry bar could break, but you know that's that too. <laughs> okay, that could be good too. All right, now let's build some die die roll. Uh, okay, so risk. <clears throat> sorry, risk to body for the dark die. You have a skill in um, your geology, like you know, uh, whatever which like one you want to use. Tectonics and have athletics. Yeah. I figure. Yeah. You know. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're definitely using like some kind of strength or something like that to try and do this as well as your um, skill with the tools. Um, so that's one light die. Now the fun part, the dark, uh, the, the devil's bargain. So DB, no matter what. Um, I think that no matter what, <clears throat> while you either try or succeed to pull this apart so we can get through, it makes the ungodly screech of metal on rock and it echoes throughout this entire whatever this place is. Yeah, um, no matter what uh, this this equipment is destroyed in the process and you cannot use it again for something similar or anything. Yeah, you lose use of that particular piece of equipment. Um, I'm going to say that no matter what can get out of here. I think 
it's going to be a little bit more complex that in doing this, like, you know, between like, you know, a lot of elbow grease and like, you know, this tool, you're going to have a, you're going to tear a small hole in your EVA suit mm. and it's going to cause you to lose some oxygen and like to, to regulate it. It's like, you're going to end up like feeling lightheaded. These are great options. Um, I, I think, I think my favorite though is the ungodly screech. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. Okay. That feels more atmospheric to me as far as the whole thing goes. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So two light, one dark, please. All right. All right, here we go. Getting ready to make a terrible risk and roll. Okay, now gives you a choice. Five yeah. means you succeed, but there's gonna be a complication. All right. Mm. And I can describe the complication, you describe how you succeed, or vice versa. Or if you wanna a little bit more of a chance you could conceivably roll with another dark die so it would be too light too dark and take the re-roll but whatever you get for the re-roll that's your final result what do you think i am intrigued by the idea of what the complication would be for this so i am i am i'm curious to see what see a complication i think for this one uh yeah so i think you know um well one of the things is going to be that you hear the ungodly screech. It echoes across the chamber. Maybe like, you know, the camera will see like something kind of weird moving um, in response to that screech. Um, and then like the complication will be that there is going to be a tear in your suit. You will be losing some oxygen and to compensate, you're going to have to change your saturation, which will continually leave you lightheaded because of the tear. Mm. Would that be a condition? Yeah, that would be end up being a condition too. Yeah. Do we have duct tape? <laughs> <laughs> Valid yeah, question. I, I imagine that we we definitely would have some sort of repair kit, but I imagine that whatever imbalance is happening is yeah i mean it, it's, i think i'm still <laughs> gonna that. get affected <laughs> yeah. but i'm going to try to put duct tape of some kind <laughs> of course on the tear. of course <laughs> looks looks hideous but you know okay so you're gonna run with the complication rather than like try to re-roll uh i mean we can we can uh yeah i think we can run with the complication okay but, uh, right. yeah because i i don't i don't mind going uh going nuts and starting to yell at things. That would be wonderful. Um. <laughs> That's what people tend to do in this game. So it's fine. Yes, it's yeah. all good. It's all good. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a five. Okay. And then we're going to go with a hideous screech. So yeah, you get the door open. Tell me what it looks like. And then we'll incorporate the other stuff beyond the door you mean well no i mean like you know like for when you're, when just you're getting the this, door like, open looks yeah, like, yeah 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 mm -hmm. okay um so i'm going to ask a real uh, a, a, an, an important question before i begin describing this and my character's reaction to this and that is uh, something that i realized i should have probably asked a while back um is there swearing in this of course okay just Fuck checking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, so it's like this. This so this mechanism uh, is is helping him out, and you hear this sort of grinding sound. This low whirring grinding sound is how it starts out as he's moving this back and forth, and so this, and then it just starts getting louder and louder as the. <laughs> The thing starts kind of burrowing in and uh, and separating, and as it separates, you begin to hear <laughs> as the door is being pried open, uh -huh. and it's like 
coming forth. You see sort of a couple of rocks are shaking loose. Mm -hmm. And I think that a, uh, I think that something comes, uh, a bit of rock breaks free mm -hmm. and skims across the shoulder yes. of my suit yeah. and just basically manages to, uh, to, to, to hit it just so that there's a small leak. Yeah. And as it's going through and it's like this whole thing, yes, he's finally fully and and as this is happening, it's like the uh, it's uh, it's kind of like you can see the the thing pushing forward. It's kind of like that uh, that moment in the intro to the Incredible Hulk almost, where it's like the uh, the, uh, the, the, the 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 TV show where the mm -hmm. he's going to bend the crowbar. It's yes. almost a little bit like that. He's like, ah, right, right, shit, right, come on, right. Son of a and, and the screech like, is so out. the screech is so loud in your own helmet as well as like echoing I'm like there, you don't think there was atmosphere but it is making sound it is it is reverberating in everybody's helmet it's reverberating across this canyon cavern thing and like because the screech is so loud and echo echoing all the way through you don't hear your suit starting to beep because of the the tear the the slash in your shoulder when you do realize it after the screech like fades then like you know you can see the alarm if for some reason you couldn't see it before you finally see the alarm you see, you hear the alarm and it's telling you it's like suit compromised tear two percent oxygen lowering bloody hell sealant you want to get where is the sealant things sort of throws the uh throws the thing down just like scrambling for for his uh i think you two see him see see him scrambling for something um yeah we got whoever's you. behind him would be able to see the, the tear in the suit yeah definitely run to him and try to help him seal up whatever happened uh after i was taken aback by the noise kind of gazing around the cavern we're in yeah i think it's a scrabble to to make sure that <clears throat> the suit is sealed maybe like one person has to hold it like closed and the other person has to apply some sealant and um rowan tell me tell me what you're feeling tell me tell me what's going on in your head as you you see the the alarm percentages going across your readout and your like you know your friends are trying to help you and you know you can feel like the 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 oxygen level like practically seeping out of your suit still and you can turn the saturation down but you know it's 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 going to feel like you are like not getting enough air So, I think if this is edging um, anything, let me know. I mean, like you know, I'm I'm happy. Oh to... no, no. Well, I'm 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 uh, just there's a cascade of terrible things that I'm thinking I can do to myself uh, here. But uh, so, like, there's this there's this kind of rage that has been welling up that he has because. It's like he's trying once once the he, he realized the sealant alarm has gone because he's like he, he's thinking once again putting again uh full blame on Anantec. He's he's thinking those bastards are going to get are going to get me killed and they're going to take uh mum and dad's house. Um and uh I mean and they're they are very old now, so they <laughs> There will be very little they can do. There's not as much fight in them. And uh, <clears throat> so, and for a brief moment, sort of as he hears the alarms and everything going off, I think before the sealant finally gets applied in and things kind of stabilize, it's like all the noises that he's hearing in his head, some of the sort of echoing coming off and the beeps and the, the sounds, there's just this brief moment when it's almost like he hears something familiar. The, the waiting room of Anantec 
plays canned music. And he thinks he hears a little bit of it for just a moment. Please make a ruin roll. This is just go to the ruin roll and then just hit roll. Okay. Ah, my goes up if it's less than five. Yes. Go up one point. I shall go up a point of ruin. Yes. Yes, you shall. My ruin is now three. Yes. Exactly. And take the uh, take the condition lightheaded. And I think because of this screech, the the chaos of trying to get his suit closed and you know maybe there's yelling going on maybe maybe rowan is yelling and like newton is yelling in 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 urgency and maybe even you're yelling lucas and you're just hearing all of these yells for some reason your your suit has amplified the yells you hear your radio suddenly just shut down. It stops working. And now you can only distantly hear both of them yelling. But yelling as if it's far away from you, but right there. Because your suit radio, is, your comm stopped working. Yeah, the <clears throat> actually... I would request making a ruin roll just for that because yes. that would freak the hell out of him. Yes, definitely make a ruin roll, please. Uh, that goes up by one. Okay. At three. Yeah, so I I think uh, during all the yelling, he's probably still got one hand on uh, Rowan's suit while mm-hmm. Newton's working on it. And <clears throat> he starts like tapping his his uh, comrades and he does the the obviously i have no comms Mm -hmm. thing and so they know what's going on and he's like face is flushed sweat you can see through in the light in his suit and he's basically just like i can't hear you so now you can only hear them if they yell please take the condition calms down like a C O M M S, not calm. No, not, not no, calm, calm. No, you're not calm at all. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so I have a kind of meta question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, at this point, um, I understand. Uh, game wise, we we go forward. Uh, is there a reason that we would not go back and try to get things fixed up before? Uh, exploring deeper or getting another team in here or or are we are we unable to go back i'm gonna say if you do decide to go back that you may have to traverse the trap again Mm -hmm. and maybe when you do you're gonna see the random arcs start up again Mm -hmm. so Maybe that would be something that deters you from going back. Oh, no, I'm going to want to keep going at this point because um, I, I, I am not uh, operating under 100% uh, uh, better judgment. Yeah. But then also, um, it's just the pure, just sort of, all right, all right, motherfuckers, let's get this over with type thing. <laughs> do you, you set do us you down s- here. What did you want us to see? Did you say that? Do you say that or do you yell that? Let me ask you that first. So I think what happens is that uh, if there's any, for, for a moment, it's like, if there's any concern, like if anyone sort of asked, do you want to go back? And it's like, what? Do you want to go back? And he he's like, <laughs> and uh, Rowan is like, no, no, I'm not bloody going back. Those motherfuckers brought us here. I want to see whatever the hell it is they wanted us to see so we can get the hell out of here. Keep going. <laughs> and he's just going to try try to walk into the room. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, let me find out the other, yeah. two's re- other two reactions first. Yeah, I, I think exchanging significant looks with, with Lucas at this point, like, 
like it would make sense to go back and fix your comms and get the suit sealed up and then come back here and continue to go further. Rowan doesn't seem like he's gonna do that. So I think he's probably helping him is the best thing to do. What What do you think here? Yeah, you're so, gonna have to yell this because he can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm assuming he's uh, he's yelling at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yelling at you. Yeah, <laughs> yelling to me. Yelling to yes. me. Yes, and um, I will respond in kind and and in the affirmative, basically. Uh, in his head, in Lucas's head, if we go back and we call another team in or something like that, this won't be his right. discovery anymore. This yes. will be whatever yes. company you know the governments who knows but so i think that's the only thing that keeps him going after Mm -hmm. um after his comms go down Mm -hmm. and i think also the naivety of thinking that his teammates are going to be by him the whole time afterwards so he's like ah we'll make it work yeah Yeah. newton just gonna all right let's keep going well, in this case, I'm going to say that this, hold on, let me see if I can give a little bit of a moment here. Mm. Yeah, a lot of yelling going on, chaos of the suit, and just trying to figure out what to do. I think after everyone, after all the yelling is 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 up and done, those of you that have the radios on realize that all communication between the eba suits is now slightly obscured by static is the underlying tone and in the hiss there's there's purposeful sounds but cannot be heard clearly. And perhaps, Lucas, you're looking at your companions as they hear this and are looking as if they're listening, but they can't quite tell what they're listening to. And you, for some reason, are now in complete silence. And that is where we're going to close out of ring two and end the session for this evening because we are going to go full bore into the remaining (laughs) rings for the next session, which will not happen next week, but the week after on Halloween. Halloween. Woof. So uh, let's just end the session here um, and do some stars and wishes. Stars are, of course, things that you liked about the session, the game, uh, each other, role play. And then wishes are what you'd like to see for next time for the remaining session. Whoever wants to start. Yeah, I like the uh, I like the setting on uh, where we're at. Um, and uh, yeah, as as usual, the, uh, the, the, the wrap up is uh, nicely paced. I'm really excited to see where that's going. Yeah, I, I, I think everyone's characters are super fun and they're going to continue to get super fun, <laughs> even more fun as we go along, really. Uh, I get excited to see where it's all going. Awesome. I, I, I got to give stars to everybody for this. Um, just, um, I'm, I'm really loving Billy for, for with, uh, with just Lucas's whole just, uh, just uh, bright, naive attitude towards things like, no, we're going to keep going because we, we're going to, we're going, everything's going to be all right if we just keep going. If we stick together, and we can we do stick, anything. It's so plan. wonderful. I love it <laughs> just for, for this, just because of the sheer uh, amount of, uh, amount of, uh, uh, amount of disappointment that is to come. <laughs> um, and just the, the, with, uh, with Mark, Mark with Newton, the way Mark is playing Newton with just the, the oh, okay, we're doing this now. Uh, it's just basically <laughs> just, the, just the sad acceptance of everything. It's so we should good. not be doing and, this, but we are going to do this. Yeah. And I just, I just loved uh, just Mads, the way that you uh, just instantly just sort of 
are able to go into these modes of describing things and draw them out. It's 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 very creepy and it's wonderful and I love it. Um, I as for wishes, uh, I I I I wish I wish us to meet someone or something. <laughs> that would be lovely. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I had such a good time. I'm going to echo what Mark said. The setting using Trophy Dark is is pretty great. So, and the pacing was very well done. I really, I really liked um, Jim how you kind of jumped into the the Devil's Bargain about mm -hmm. Anatech and everything, and how that yeah, kind of yeah. turned into a thing. <clears throat> and uh, for Mark, I really like. Uh, I'm going to echo the same thing that Jim had said where it's like the engineer who's like, well, I fucking know better than this, but I guess we're going to do this anyway. Yep. And nobody's going to listen to me. And uh, yeah, my wish is just to uh, receive a Nobel prize because that's totally what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I guess, I, I guess I have a wish to like figure out exactly what the con point of contention is between me and my advisor. It's like, like, I don't quite know what uh, I think I'm right about yet. So we'll figure that out. Yeah, it's going to be the thing. And again, that's that's pretty much what I'm going by. I'm like, what is this mission yeah. meaning to you towards your drive? Because it is so important to, that is the thing that you're going to hang on to. That is the mm -hmm. thing that is the only reason that you're like sticking it out for this miserable, you know, mission. And yeah. I love the fact that Jim jumped on that, that Rowan jumped on the whole Anantech, ah, you know, like that, like, ah, you know, and don't worry, I'll have more opportunity to stick that to you for the second session. So I can't wait. I'm excited. And um, yeah, I mean, like if we can figure that out, like I, I'm doing this backwards, I'm doing wishes first. So for, for Newton, like, you know, doing the whole, I'm going to I'm going to bring this this dude up, you know. If you have a name for him, I'm mean, like you know you can come up with it like and tell me offline because I'm I'm curious to to have you picture this guy and like you know as things get stranger and deeper, it's like you know to to call these memories back, especially because like you know me guys like you know for those of you who have played with me recently, it's like you know I love shifting reality, mm -hmm. so I'm all about it. You're going to have flashbacks upon flashbacks upon is that memory real? I don't know, but we'll see. Um, and then uh, with Lucas, I mean, <laughs> it's it's so fun to have like one character be that like not naive, but just like optimistic. Like, you know, you kind of need that kind of balance between, oh, shit, we're going into a hell hole. And then the, like the ones that are like, no, 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 it'll be fine. You know, and then the resigned, yeah, we're doing it <laughs> kind of thing. So I love the dynamic between you three and it's so great. And I love these characters and, you know, your answers to my, to my prompts are, are really interesting and I can't wait to bring more of it out. So I'm excited for this. Absolutely. Um, and just the descriptions of like what you're doing um, is great. Uh, I want to see uh, specifically, I would love to see um, the rituals being used. I mean, obviously um, Rowan had used his and then like, you know, I want to see the percussive maintenance and improbable intuition. I can't wait. As soon as I it. find something to hit, I'm going to hit it. I okay. Okay. Great. I can't wait. Those are going, those are going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, I mean, like I had a lot of fun this session. Thank you guys so much for for joining my table for this. And again, this is the first time I've actually run this. I mean, I haven't even played it yet. Um, so this is exciting. And and I really like these, you know, hints of the creepy space horror that we're going to see later on in full force. Can't wait. Yay. So again, we have a couple of weeks before we conclude this incursion and I'm glad that you guys had fun and we yeah. will continue on with it for the remaining rings. All right. You guys have wonderful gaming um, for, you know, in between uh, if I don't see you for something else in the interim <laughs> and uh, I will see you on Halloween when we finish yeah. project Galileo and see how your explorers turn out at the end. Bye. Bye.
badly. <laughs> Wish for badly. Wish for badly. badly. Always. Yeah, Alrighty, great. Have a wonderful Alrighty. night, guys. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.